Okay. <clears throat> ah, welcome everybody to the 14th annual Christmas tree lecture. I, I don't know how many of you have seen any of the others, but th at this time of year I try to uh, say what's the coolest thing I learned about trees during the year. And, uh, and it seems that there's, uh, there's always plenty of stuff uh, uh, new to learn about trees. That, um, and who knows what I'll learn next year. But, uh, uh, but uh, if I don't learn any more, well, maybe this will be the last. But I, did, I doubt it. Uh, <clears throat> so nice to see a lot of old friends and a lot of new friends here tonight. Uh, I got, uh, I'm in a great position uh, when you're giving a talk. Uh, it's, supposed, it, it's always um, uh, um, more fun when you have something to say. And uh, in fact, uh, though I'm, I think I'm suffering from from a little bit of uh, of, of too much to say tonight, uh, because there's I learned so much about this topic, ZDDs, since uh, uh, the beginning of summer, that um, that I can't really tell you uh, even half of it. I, I mean, I would need three or four lectures to uh, to go through, and and, I'm, and, and I really believe that uh, uh, that if I were still active in teaching, uh, I, I would enjoy teaching a, one, a full one-quarter course just out of the, uh, out of this part of, of my uh, book that, I've, that I finished the draft. It, um, you take a look at this. I'll see if Jason can get on here. This is, you can download this right now. Uh, it's called a pre-fascicle. Uh, you can download this, and uh, I, I have to warn you, it's 140-some uh, <coughs> pages. Um, uh, including the index, um, and not only that, but uh, I'm going to change it next week. So if you download it now, it'd be, be, it'd be a mistake to print it. Uh, you know, wait and t wait a couple of weeks. Uh, uh, but what's going to happen is that <clears throat> after after I after I make the uh, the revisions that I that I recently learned about, um, then then uh, I'm going to combine this with Prefasco 1A, which is uh, we will then make a paperback book called Fascicle One, and that, and we're expecting to publish that about the end of January, and that will that will um, uh, then then the the beginning of Art of Computer Programming Volume Four will all be in place then, uh, starting with Fascicle Zero, One, Two, Three, and Four, uh, which makes about 800 and some pages of of of, of material. Uh, th this is the missing link that that goes between zero and the and and two, three, and four that have that have already been uh, published. So anyway, this but this section alone, just this the the second half of Fascicle One, uh, I I say I could make a course out of it um, uh, for uh, advanced uh, uh, undergrads and. Um, and, uh, and and beginning grad students, uh, and I don't think that, uh, you know, and I and, and I might still not get through all the stuff because there is just a, an awful lot of good stuff uh, that I I believe is is of, of lasting value that uh, that I had no idea was there when I began to work on this material. Um, now, okay, so how many people were at my lecture that I gave on uh, in in uh, June about BDDs? Where I talked about the beginning, oh, about half of the people. How many people know what a BDD is? A binary decision diagram. How many don't know what a BDD is? Oh, good, good. I, uh, uh, actually, the the less you know about BDDs, the better, in some sense, I think, because uh, it, well, <coughs> uh, anyway, what I'm going to talk about today, the ZDD, as we, as we get into it, it it it. Um, it's an outgrowth of, of BDDs in the sense that this, this thing called a BDD was discovered first, and then about uh, seven, eight years later came the ZDDs uh, as a variation. I might as well write his name down right now. Um, it was introduced by Shinichi Minato. Um, and, uh, uh, and and he had noticed that when he's working on combinatorial problems, um, uh, he could say he could he could uh, do a lot better than, than than a BDD by by changing the data structure a little bit, and so ZDD came along as a variation of the BDD, uh, and 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 the word ZDD 
Uh, it, it was <coughs> actually he called it zero suppressed binary decision diagram, and then and then for a while this was called a ZBDD, and more recently there's uh, uh, it's getting so important that uh, we can't. Uh, bother to say so many letters all the time we uh, we used to it, right so 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 now we you know ZDD and there's a I don't know 300,000 Google hits for 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 the, the ZDD that means uh, um, a, a decision diagram there's also a lot of other flaky stuff that you can always find on the you give any three letters to the to Google and it'll and it'll it'll turn up some relation to erotic things and so on but but um, <laughs> But but this is erotic enough for me. This computing. Thing. <laughs> um, uh, <clears throat> um, the so but but um, uh, but I'm saying may, maybe a knowledge of BDD might might be hurtful to understand ZDDs because it's actually even though um, a lot of the theory it, it shares uh, a, a great deal of the theory with the BDDs for almost every everything that that's uh, that we study uh, quantitatively about BDD there's a corresponding theorem uh, about ZDD um, still it's there, there's, there's a dramatic difference between the two in, in the intuition in, in the kinds of things for, uh, the, the, that they're good at uh, uh, in, in, with, with BDDs uh, 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 you really want to try to find a way to keep the number of variables down. Uh, with ZDDs, uh, maybe you're better off having a lots of variables instead of just a few variables. And, and, and anyway, so I'm trying to explain uh, uh, that, it's, that it's really a different concept. Uh, the BDD was invented to, as a great data structure, and it's the data structure of choice for Boolean functions, representing a Boolean function inside the, a computer. Uh, the ZDD is 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 not really a data structure for boolean function it's a, it's a data, it's a data structure for what Minato called sets of combinations um, but there's so many other names for this in 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 the world um, and what i what i believe is the um, uh, probably the, the the most common and the most easy uh, and, and he agrees with me now uh, is families of sets <clears throat> so it's ZDD is, the, is, is, I believe, the data structure of choice to represent a family of sets. Now, what is a family set? Well, it's a, it's a set of sets. Um, it's, uh, uh, but I just call it a family of sets because uh, I mean, I, call, I could have called it a set of families or something. But uh, we've got to have. I, I want to have two two words uh, so that because uh, there's there's two levels. There, 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 well, there, there, there's three levels. There's objects of a universe, and then you, there's sets of objects, and then sets of sets of objects or families of sets of objects okay so when so a huge number of combinatorial problems uh, uh, are based on studying a family of sets of objects and um, uh, and uh, in fact uh, it's it's the, the, the fancy the fancy name is really a hypergraph a hypergraph is a family of sets um, <coughs> uh, you, you know what a graph is a graph is a, is a, a set of edges and an edge is, uh, but it's a family of edges. A graph is a family of edges. Each edge has two elements to it, in it. Well, a hypergraph is a family of edges, but each edge might have, you know, any number of elements in it. So, so you just so uh, so again, ZDD is um, the uh, data structure of choice. Uh, uh, in, in many cases, for representing uh, a, a hypergraph. Uh, inside a computer except that the kind of things that people do with traditionally with hypergraphs only only is a few kind of things that people do with families of sets and and, and many other uh, applications of families of sets are, are, are occur in combinatorics and they don't call them hypergraphs because they don't use any geometric intuition in the way that uh, the graph theorists do so uh, I, I like family of sets. Now, the, 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 big, the question for me is what happened if, um, if uh, Minato would have invented uh, the ZDD structure first and then the BDD had, had come along eight, eight years after that. You know, what, would this th what would the thing be called? Uh, I have no idea. We might have called an HDD or something for hypergraph, but but uh, but but then BDD might have been thought of as a as a variant of ZDD. Um, somehow, I, I hope it'll be clear be, be, uh, when I finally get into telling you uh, what it's all what it really is, instead of just talking about the name. Uh, I hope it'll be clear to you that these are um, that that it, it's nice to think of it at, uh, as if you uh, you want a data structure for a family of sets. And not to think about it as uh, you want something that's 
that's, a, that's related to Boolean functions, but then you're modifying it for combinatorial application. Um, uh, at, at, at the end of my lecture in, Ju in June, uh, David Dill uh, um, raised the question. He said, Don, you haven't talked about ZDDs. Uh, did you realize that, th that there's uh, this other structure that's good for uh, 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 combinatorial problems? And I, and I said, yeah, I'm just about to start looking at them. Uh, I haven't written that part yet, on my, uh, and I'm going to spend the summer doing that. And wow, what happened during the summer? I kept, I, I, I kept learning every week. I kept, I kept seeing more and more things that uh, 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 powerful things that, about the the CDD that I that I had no idea w was there. And and I I believe it's correct to say that most of the people, um, um, <clears throat> most of the stuff isn't really in, 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 very much in the literature. Um, I I. There, there, there are uh, there are a lot of great papers there, but the, but the, when I saw other people citing these papers, they just would would sort of parry the parrot the abstract, and they didn't really seem to understand the, the the brilliant ideas that were in those papers. So I so I think although the authors of these of these papers, you know, I'm not the only person that that, that saw this. It's it's funny that the that uh, the, the community using. Uh, ZDDs has has not been the the the, the combinatorial community that that deserves to, to use it the most so far, and so uh, a lot of this beautiful stuff is still way is, is still in its infancy, and um, and in fact um, I finally decided that uh, you know I I I'd, I'd better just uh, wrap up this book. It's already already way longer than it should be, and uh, and there's no way that I'm going to get to the end of it every week. I keep finding another thing that's that deserves to be in there. Uh, so let's let it. You know. Anyway, I I I, I can't solve all the problems of the world, and I let everybody have the fun of of, of 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 doing it. So I'm just going to give you a whole bunch of examples of of the beginning of this subject. So let let's now let's, um, let's start out. So, so uh, we have a family of set, and uh, uh, more precisely, I mean a, a family of subsets of an ordered universe. So, so I have an, a universe, and the universe is ordered. Um, and uh, and so the so we we have the empty family is one thing. Uh, we got to start with the with with the simplest stuff. And and anybody who knows me knows that I, I like to start small. <laughs> All the time, uh, I, 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 I don't know. I feel I'm in more in charge. So the empty family, and we call this the empty set. Uh, with um, I, well, I could write it in tech, but forget it. Then there's the unit family, which is the the, the next simplest um, uh, family of sets. And it, okay, the empty family has no sets whatsoever. The unit family has one set, but the set is empty. So it's the set consisting of the empty set. Okay, so we write it this way, and then I need a notation for that, so I'm going to call that epsilon. Now, okay, so we represent that inside the computer. The empty family corresponds to a, a, a note in the computer that I, that I write this way as a bottom element. Um, and I put a square around it, uh, meaning that it's a, it, it, it's a node that doesn't have any, it, it, it's not going to point to any other node. So, so now the the uh, unit family is going to correspond also to one of these uh, sync nodes, but this is the top. What I call it with this. And and when we're when we were doing Boolean functions, um, uh, the uh, um, the all zero Boolean function correspond to this guy, and the all one Boolean function correspond to this guy. With the ZDD, however, the function that corresponds to this guy uh, is is not the all one function, but it's the function that is true only when all the variables are false. Um, it's a un it, it, it's a family that has only one. Um, so so the, the Boolean function is is true. Um, uh, okay, I, I I better say why is why are Boolean functions like families of sets? Uh, and the answer is um, we can if you have a, if you have any Boolean function uh, on on this universe, uh, so every every possible subset of the universe uh, corresponds to an encoding of the uh, of uh, of some of some Boolean variables x1, x2, up to xn as to whether or not. Um, 
uh, you know, any, any, any set corresponds to, uh, uh, we set xi to 1 if, 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 if element i is in the set, otherwise xi is 0. And so, um, uh, so, so a Boolean function is true at a certain number of, of, of uh, n-tuples, x1 through xn. Those are, the, those are called the solutions of the Boolean function. What are the x so that f of x is 1? And every x can be thought of as a set. Uh, if x is 0, 1, 0, 1, this is a set consisting of 2 and 4, say, for something like that. Um, okay, so then the set of all solutions is a family of sets. Uh, so, so, so if you have a family of sets, you can, you can define a Boolean function that is equal to 1 at all, at, at all combinations of x that define one of the sets of the fam family, and it's equal to 0 in the other cases. Anyway, so, so set, families of sets is a, it can be encoded as a Boolean function, uh, but sometimes it's much better to think of them as at, just in terms of families of sets and elements and things like this directly instead of in, instead of thinking of them uh, Boolean wise. Um, now, <clears throat> uh, the more complicated family. So it, f is any other family uh, besides the empty family and the unit family. Then, um, uh, uh, what do we know about it? Well, it's it, 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 it's not empty, so it has at least one element, one one set in the family, and it's not the unit family, so there's at least some element in in, in this set. Okay, so um, so we say let V be the least element of the universe. Um, that F supports. Um, this is just a, 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 a got to have some, some 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 word. F supports it, meaning that it, it appears in at least one member of F. It, it, there's at least some set of the family that contains V. Okay, so so we look at all the variables that that occur, and I said that U was an uh, was an uh, an ordered universe. And it's a finite universe. If you if you're a mathematician, you'd say. What do you do? What do you mean? If the real numbers or something? It's got to be a well-ordered universe then. But uh, I, <coughs> I see Percy in the back row, and I just heard him give a marvelous lecture about well-ordered sets. And so, okay. But uh, anyway, uh, I, I, I'm I'm willing to go some sometimes up to countable infinity, but but in, for computer programming, it's hard to get beyond that. Now, um, okay. So there is some smallest very, smallest element of the universe that appears in one of the sets if we're not one of these two families. And, and, so, um, and, and so I, um, I can define two subfamilies now. F0 is a set of all sets, the family of all sets, uh, that are in the family F, and V is not a member of alpha. And F1 is, is the set of all uh, alpha, uh, is the set of all set uh, the family of all sets so that alpha together with v is is in the family and and v is not in the set okay so um, in other words just knock out v from all the ones it's in this gives us two subfamilies either either they contain v or they don't contain v and then um, uh, inside the computer f is represented as a circular node, uh, which is sort of a branch on V, and then I, I, I draw a dotted line to F0 and a solid line to F1, and here I give the representations of F0 and F1, uh, but now V isn't in there anymore, so, it's going, so, so I can continue this definition recursively until eventually I get a representation of, of the whole family of sets. Okay, well, I'll, I'll give an example. <coughs> um, uh, so that you're all with me. Um, in fact, uh, I, I, I could show you an example if I were using PowerPoint, you know, but uh, I've been sitting through so many PowerPoint lectures where the, the guy turns the uh, clicks too fast for me, and so I'm, I'm going to draw out a, a solution so that you can see what... Do. I'm, I'm going to consider... Uh, it, it, I mean, instead of just just flashing the answer to you, I'm going to actually I'm actually write it out here. And so let's let's suppose that F is the is a very simple family. It's going to be the two element subsets 
um, of um, of the universe one two three okay and so this is um, in other words uh, well it, it could be called s sub two of one two three and so um, <clears throat> so how how do I represent f well, what's the smallest element of the universe that, that's supported by this? You, you, you see, F has, has three sets in it. One, two, one, three, and two, three. That's the family we're talking about. What? One, one, two, two, and three, three? One, one. No, no, that's multisets. We're, we're talking about two element su subsets. So, so, so uh, uh, a, set is, a set doesn't have repeated elements. Um, uh, you can represent multisets also by... by uh, by a sequence of ZDD, <laughs> um, and and Minato does this by, for, for example, having a ZDD for all the things that appear, uh, all, all the sets that occur an odd number of times, and then another one for all all that occur an odd multiple of two number of times, and things like that. And and, and you can you can play games like that, but that's 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 one of the things that I won't talk about anymore today. Uh, but that's okay. Keep. Asking questions when you when they when they occur to you, but that's the way I this is interactive. Okay, so so we start out then. Um, uh, there's two. Uh, so so the smallest uh, variable, uh, the smallest element that's that's supported is one, and there and there are the sets that contain one and the sets that don't contain one. So the 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 ones that um, um, uh, that don't contain one are. Uh, S2 of 2 and 3, the two element sets of 2 and 3. Uh, the ones that do contain 1, after you throw 1 out, are what? They're the S1 of 2 and 3. They're, they're the things that contain one more element of, of 2 and 3. Okay? And so um, uh, I can, you know, so I can expand this out with the recursive idea. Here I'll put a 2, and then I'm going to have S. Um, on this side, it's going to be S two of three, which which turns out to be nothing, uh, null. So so this will go to the empty family. Uh, but if it if it doesn't contain one, but it does contain two, then it's got uh, th then then we come to S one of three, which is going to be three. Um, and uh, it, it, you know if three doesn't have uh, if 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 three isn't isn't in there, then we lose. But if three is there. Uh, then w we win um, uh, because uh, if it if it doesn't contain one does contain two does contain three uh, what's left is the empty family which is this guy here or the, I'm sorry the unit family <coughs> epsilon um, now on, on the right hand branch I'm going uh, uh, I'm going to s1 of two and three so that means I want one element out of either two or three but not both so if I don't have two, well let's let's suppose I do have two. Then I better not have three. Okay. Uh, so what what's what's the case there? It would be it would be s zero of three, and that's the unit family. So so this will go, branch will go right down to here. Um, if, if it contains one and two, it comes here. But we don't mention three. We bypass three. Really, it, it, that means three can't appear in this in this branch. It's not supported on this branch. On the other hand, on the on, if if you look at it, um, you coming coming this. Wait, wait, wait a minute. I I I, I did I do, did I do this wrong? Let's see. S three is yeah um, no yeah that's yeah I think I, I this is fine. So. Um, um, but if I have one, um, uh, but I don't have two, then I've got to have three. All right. But now notice I came to the same node, and that's something I forgot to tell you. That is, we always uh, make sure that no node appears twice in our data structure, and this is a huge importance. Uh, uh, so although I'm ta I'm saying I'm giving a Christmas tree lecture, and uh, it looks like I'm I'm giving you a tree here because I have a root and I've got these branches, um, this isn't a true tree because uh, overlapping subtrees are combined into one. This is a directed acyclic graph, not a, not a true, uh, <coughs> not strictly a tree. But I'll bring trees in later, don't worry. Uh, um, 
so um, uh, in, inside the computer, then, uh, these, what I drew as circles and, and squares, are, are, are nodes, a few, a few cells of memory, <coughs> filled with, 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 with three things. Um, and, um, well, I'll, 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 I'll give it more detail in a second. But, um, uh, uh, well, in fact, yeah, why don't I do that? Let, let, me, let me do one more example, and I'll do this one. I'll do this one real quick, and you stop me if I if I make a mistake. Uh, but here I'm going to have a family that contains two sets, um, one, two, and four. Yeah. Um, on the first piece of paper that we're working with. Yeah, first you, piece of paper. At the bottom, you talk on the F1 is equal to the union of alpha and V. That's this one here. F1. Okay, this is the right. this is the family of all alpha, such that alpha union V is in F. So alpha is a set of of elements, and if I throw V in, I, I could I could have put a V in. I could have put braces around the V. Yeah, this is uh, this is uh, this is a simplification that's often used by people who are giving lectures. Uh, also. <laughs> Also, by people who are giving, who are writing textbooks and doing doing research in, in with sets, uh, uh, we 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 uh, allow ourselves to uh, to consider a, what, uh, a one element set. Uh, but actually, you know, uh, you're a true computer scientist because I'm I one level no, no, no. This is you're a true computer scientist because it, it, a comp when you're programming, you got to know the difference. Um, okay, but uh, you know, so 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 you're correct in 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 in. in uh, I'm very glad you are on record now saying that I'm a true computer scientist. <laughs> <laughs> Is your boss sitting in the same row? No, but I'm going to yeah. show him okay. video. Well, <laughs> I, 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 I really meant it. Yeah. Well, now, okay. So here's another uh, you know, another simple example. Let's 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 do this quickly. What's the smallest element supported here? One, right? Um, so now, if I if I don't have a one then what's going to happen? I, I, I'm looking at the, uh, yeah, you want, maybe you want my, my definition up here. But, uh, okay, so, um, so, okay, so, so if I don't have a one, what's, what's left? It, 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 it's a family of one set, four. And so, um, that's easy, that's, that goes like this. Okay. Um, uh, now, the other one, um, uh, if it does have a one, then we have to have a similar thing, but with two instead, right? So it just goes like that. Now, uh, 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 let me throw another family into the into the mix here too, uh, because uh, uh, G is another family, and, and G is a family containing the empty set first and and one two and one four. <clears throat> Now, uh, the reason I'm doing two two families of sets instead of just one is because really, uh, w when we're working in in the computer, we, we don't have just one ZDD for one family. We got lots of families that we're that, that we're working with uh, in in a problem, and so we really have a, not just a ZDD but a ZDD base. A whole, you know, uh, uh, for, uh, and 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 we share the data structures among everything in the in the ZDD base. So so this is this is sort of F. Uh, corresponds to, to this node, but G will correspond to another node. What's the smallest uh, uh, thing? Uh, what's the smallest element uh, in this universe for G? Well, that's uh, uh, that's also one is the, is the smallest guy that appears. So if I if I now uh, say one does not appear, uh, what is the left branch of of um, um, in that case for G? Anybody, don't, work, don't worry about the making unit, a mistake. Uh, what? The unit. Epsilon. The unit. The unit. Epsilon, absolutely. So, so that goes down here. But if, if it does contain one, then it's a, it's a family that contains either two or four. All right. So um, it's going to go, then we're going to check on two. And, and if, if, if uh, two is in there, then good. But if two isn't in there, it's going to be four. Okay, 
so anyway, this is a ZDD base for, for both F and G. And uh, let's suppose that I, that, that, uh, that I put these in memory. So, so I have cell 0 for, for, for the bottom sink, cell 1 for the top sink. I might put this in location 2. Uh, the order of these other locations isn't really important. Um, um, but I might as well uh, match my notes. So call this location 5, this location 6 here. So now inside, uh, inside a machine, uh, we could, yeah. When you said that there, there was a requirement that no node appears twice, that's just no. for one of the functions? Or? So I'm seeing the two being repeated. Of the, and you're, seeing, you're seeing the two being repeated. No, two is in both locations. Yeah, right. But, once it, but in one case it has, yeah, the, 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 the dotted branch is, uh, is going over here. And in the other case, the, the dotted branch is going over here. So, so it's not the same node, it, uh, and, and, and that'll be clear in a minute uh, if, if, if you look at this picture here. Um, let's, so this picture corresponds to that, that ZDD base. Uh, so, so each node, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, has three parts, a V part, a low uh, pointer, and a high pointer. And, uh, and uh, for these sync nodes, I'm, I'm calling the V part infinity. Um, and so, so, and then I'm just saying the low, low and high point to themselves. But uh, in the other cases, so, so for example, in, in location two here, the V part is four. Uh, the left branch goes, the low branch goes here, the high branch goes to one. Uh, in, in location three, I have another, I have this guy. Uh, the the low branch goes to zero, the high branch goes to one. In, in location four, the low branch goes to two, and the high branch goes to one. All right. So the uh, so, so this is the way it looks inside the inside the computer. There's also a hash table to keep track that that so, so that uh, if somebody later wants to make a node, we want, we, we want to check that that we've already got it or not. So the, there's this law here: no two nodes have the same triple v low and high. Uh, furthermore, there's no node that has high equals zero. This is an important point. This is why Monato called them zero suppressed BDDs in the first place. You never have high equals zero except node zero itself here. Um, um, and um, you, see you see why? Because if, you, if, if, if you're going on the high branch, you're, you're talking about um, uh, going to some non-empty family of sets. You, you would go to the, you, you wouldn't have a high branch at all if it weren't supported. Uh, there has to be some, you were supported, so you have to be, you're, you, you know, you, you were in some set. So, so, so you'll never go to a, you, you never go to zero in this, in this branch, okay? Now, the other, the other condition here is that this ordering is important, so that when you do go to the low branch, you go to a, a larger V field than you had yourself, and the high branch the same way. So, so the V fields are always increasing as you, you know, as as you as you follow down this this structure. So, so, so this is the, this is the whole idea of a ZDD. Now, um, and not not uh, hard to implement, but not trivial either, because of this uh, of this hash table which goes on behind the scenes, and then we we uh, want to uh, think nodes uh, turn out that it turns out that we're, we're going to want to. Uh, uh, find space for new nodes, and then o other nodes are going to be are going to die, and we can, and we want to recycle them, and so garbage collection has to go on behind the scenes, and all that uh, isn't really as simple as I'm going to, uh, but I'm going to I'm going to forget about it for the rest of this talk. Uh, uh, you, you read my book, and it talks about and other things about what what goes on to make it, but this is the whole the whole basis of, of the of the of the, the data structure. Now, one more thing I, you might as well notice here, and that is that uh, it uses the elements one, two, and four. It would have been just it wouldn't have been any bigger if I had used uh, the elements uh, one million, two million, and four million. Uh, uh, but if I was talking about a boolean function, um, I would have had to have have to have extra things saying that all of these all of these variables that that haven't been mentioned uh, uh, have to have to evaluate to zero, have to, have to be not present. 
so uh, the uh, uh, so if I were representing this as a Boolean function of uh, of the variables one, two, three, and four, uh, I would have to worry about three, um, say, be, saying that x three has to be zero, and so I have to a lot of I would have to come and test three x three in, in in several places. So um, this is why Minato found that he was he, he was working on a lot of combinatorial problems, and he's looking at Boolean functions that he got with those combinatorial problems, and and a lot of those uh, Boolean functions had the property that uh, uh, there were uh, there were very there were there were high branches that were uh, always zero, and he, he, he just wanted to eliminate. Um, that's that's where it started. But but, but uh, my point is that really, if we if we just intuit the whole idea of family of sets and and keep uh, Boolean functions as, as, as something that we'll think about tomorrow instead of today, then uh, this is a natural data structure just in the family of sets world. And, that's, and the family of sets world um, has lots of different users than the, fa than the, the Boolean function world. Okay, well, now I, <coughs> this is the Christmas tree lecture, and I pr so I, so I want to bring in trees before I, before I get into other kinds of comments. Right? And uh, so let me, um, thing about trees here. Um, uh, in many of our previous lectures, we've talked about Professor. nested parentheses um, as, as representative. Oh, thank you, Jason. Well. All right, where did you lose me? <laughs> no. Welcome to another Christmas. <laughs> but, um, all right. Nested parentheses are, are, are one of the, the important ways to, to describe tree structure inside a computer, and I'm not going to dwell on that. But, but uh, here, here, here are the five ways to, uh, to take three left parentheses and three right parentheses and have them properly nested. Now, uh, now let me uh, 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 imagine that these are that these are words, and we're going to go more into words later on. So I'm going to call this L1, L2, L3, R4, R5, R6 for the first one, meaning that the first the first uh, character is is a left parenthesis, of, and so on. The fourth character is a right parenthesis, and so on. So so here we are. L1, L to R3, L4, R5, R6, L1, L2, R3, R4, L5, R6. Uh, you get the idea, but I'm still going to persist here. L3, L4, R5, R6, and L1, R2, L3, R4, L5, R6. Now, this is a family of sets believe it or not, because I could put braces around all these things. And the universe is the, is a set of, uh, well. Hey, sorry. Um, when did L2 become R2? When did L? In which line do you want? The second line? Uh, L2, the third, the R2? Third, yeah, the, the third and fourth lines don't really uh, work together. This line? Right? It's so this R4, is R4, R4, and, and L2 on fourth line. R4. That should be L2 and R4. No. There's a number in there. There's a there's a number. There's there's the third letter is an L. Oh, okay, fourth okay, letter okay. is an L. Or the fifth and sixth are, 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 are. So yeah, this is a this is not the standard way to to represent parentheses. I'm not subscripting them according to their rank or anything. Just according to the position in the string, and and so uh, imagine I have a universe of, of twelve letters: L1, R1, L2, R2, up to L6, R6, and this is these are five uh, families of uh, from that from that universe, and I can uh, I can. Um, um, write down uh, the ZDD for it, which turns out to be really nice and simple. Uh, and I, I have it here in my cheat sheet if I can find it, but, but other, otherwise I'll just uh, wing it. What? It's, I think it's on, it's on the bottom half of your Oh, sheet. hey. No, it's not. No, no, if you pull the pad down. Oh, okay. So <laughs> <laughs> pull the pad down. 
What and now you're holding it. <laughs> this guy, yeah, but this is, here, I, here, here I did only the L's and, or, and only the R's, but, oh, okay, that's a but I want to do both, both, uh, both, and, uh -huh. okay, so, uh, because it's more, it, it turned out that when I gave, when, when I did this, uh, I thought it, I didn't think of combining the L's and R's, but it's better to combine the L's and R's, so, so, okay, so here we go, no, that's not what I did, though, okay, well, Maybe. Aha, it's the back sheet of this. Okay, so I start with L1. And um, if I don't have an L1, I'm dead. Uh, they, all, they all have an L1. Uh, so I, I, I could write dot, 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 and go to the null, uh, to the empty sink. But uh, that's going to mess up the diagram. There's going to be lots and lots of dot, 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 the empty sink. So I'm, I'm just gonna, um, not going to write any of those, any of those guys. Uh, if if it's dot, dot, dot to the empty, I, I'm not going to write it. Then L2 is, is a branch point here. And, um, um, uh, and, it might, and if I don't have an L2, I've got to have an R2. Um, if, but th then if I have the R2, then it's got to be L3. Um, and, and either L4 or R4. I'll just dr draw the whole darn thing out here. And then L5. Um, now, what, what this other branch is, going, is coming down here. If I have L1 and L2, then L3 is a possibility, or if not, R3 here. And that's a solid line there. This is sloppy, but that's, that's the point that you have to supply some of your own intelligence so that makes you think about this right so he, so th the idea is that the um, that it's a it's a it's a pretty pretty nice and tidy uh, CDD <coughs> and um, as I said if there's only one branch coming out of these guys that means that uh, 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 you're supposed to just die and, uh, and, and go down to the, uh, to the null sink. Now, um, uh, 14 nodes all together, there's a null sink sitting out here, getting a whole bunch of stuff. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Uh, and it's representing a, f a family of size 5. Well, that's not a great win. We could, we could, we could just throw the, the family of size 5. Um, there. But if I, if instead I, this is the case n equals three. I have three, uh, three parentheses. But uh, uh, if you go to n, n equals twenty-four, for example, uh, then um, um, uh, the corresponding thing, uh, it, it, it would look something like this. It would start out uh, actually the same way, um, and it would have six hundred and two nodes total, and. Uh, uh, the total number of solutions, uh, the total number of trees that it encodes is, uh, you know, a trillion and some. So this is a nice compact way to represent trees. It, and uh, you, you, you're representing all these trees. You don't have to generate them all. You can, you know, you've got, uh, you, you can ask questions uh, like uh, uh, now we can we can look at the at, at the families that contain L6 or something like this uh, very easily. So 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 small no, small space inside the computer we can represent large combinatorial sets of interest, and then we can represent other large combinatorial sets of interest, and then operate on on them together and and solve and, and solve other problems about them uh, efficiently. Uh, for example, random generation. Uh, if you have any uh, um, any family of sets represented as a ZDD, you can uh, uh, you can you can uh, quickly, in, in terms of the size of the ZDD, uh, get a random family, uh, a random set of, of the family. Okay. Now let's see how are we doing on time. Okay. So now now I got to talk about the lots and lots of applications instead of talking about the the nuts and bolts. Um, and we'll see see some of the things we can do. So um, operations on the families is is the next thing. Um, and and um, depending on what part of combinatorics you look at, you, you find 
lots of, uh, of uses for families of sets and people in different branches of combinatorics have different operations that, that they're, uh, uh, that they're, uh, that are, that are key for them. But the, the very, the very natural, the very simplest ones are just take the union of two families. So F and G are families of sets, and, and the union of two families is the family of all sets alpha, so that alpha is in F or alpha is in G. Great. F of intersect G is the set of all, uh, the family of all sets that are in, in both F and G. Uh, F uh, set minus of G is the set of a family of all sets that are in F but not in G and uh, so on. Uh, I, I, I might as well go through this because uh, uh, it's not going to take that long. So this is the uh, um, F uh, symmetric difference between F and G is F minus G or G minus F. Now, it, suppose F is uh, it is a family of sets represented as a ZDD with F0 and F1 here, and G is a family that is, has W uh, and, F, and G0 and G1 uh, as its representation. Uh, the, uh, the algorithm for computing all four of these operations is very simple, and um, so I, uh, um, uh, I'll... Um, I'll show you for, for, all, for all four cases. We have F union G, F intersect G, F minus G, F symmetric difference with G. And uh, there's three cases. If V equals W, um, then, um, uh, in other words, the, both of them have the smallest element of support, then what, what, what do we get for the union? Well. If it if it if it doesn't contain v, uh, we want the we want the union of all uh, of all things that were in f or in g. So um, if it doesn't contain v, then it's got to be uh, it's going to be here f zero union g zero the ones that that, that weren't in, in, in there. And it's easy to see really that this is also f one union g one. So recursively, uh, we just uh, uh, go down to to the descendants of of f and g. And, and continue the, the same process. Eventually, we get down to a sink, or we get to a, a, a pro sub problem we've seen before, and we and we don't have to and, and we keep a, a, a memo cache so that we don't ha have to do the same operation uh, that, that we've already that we've already done. Uh, once we know that, uh, once once we've computed a union. Uh, uh, we remember it so we don't have to uh, compute it again. Uh, this one, um, same thing, uh, if it's not in, uh, uh, we do uh, F0 intersect G0, F1 intersect G1. And in fact, it's going to be the same for the difference and the and, um, F0 difference G0, F1 difference G1. And, and um, um, <clears throat> F0 plus G0, F1 plus G1. The, the interesting thing occurs if, if V is, is, is different from W. If V is less than W, for example, um, then um, uh, uh, that means that, that uh, uh, V occurs in the family F, but it doesn't occur in the family G. So in the case of union, uh, the algorithm is that we take F0 union G here, and here we just branch to F1, which we already knew. Um, in the case of intersection, well, well, what we actually do is um, uh, V is not going to occur in the intersection, and so, so we, just give the, we just take F intersected with G0, and, and V doesn't even appear in the, in, in the result. And, uh, Similarly, for this one, is f minus g zero, and, and, and in the la and in the last one, uh, it it, uh, it turns out that it's w, not v. No, v. Sorry, it's v. Ah, I I, I, I no, I I um I, I did this wrong. There's v here going to f one, and on this side, it's f zero with g. 
Well, anyway, you can work out these, these details, and um, um, uh, I don't have time to, uh, to, to dwell on this, just to point out that it's an it, easy recursive process. Once you've got, uh, what, what, once you located the smallest element that's supported, then, it's, then you can recursively define these operations on the remaining set. And the, the other, there's a third case, V is greater than W, and it's not symmetrical uh, to the to case V less than, uh, less than W, because uh, uh, these rules are not symmetrical between left and right. We have a, a rule about suppressing zero off of the high branch, but we don't have a rule about su uh, suppressing zero off the, off the low branch. Yeah. Um, if V is equal to W, then F plus G should not have V, right? F plus G? Should oh, yes. not have V. Uh, yeah, yeah. There will be, there will be uh, uh, take for example, um, uh, F is equal to uh, 1, 2, and G is equal to 1, 3. Um, now, um, uh, F0 is... Uh, uh, um, the things that are in that are in F but not in G, or in G but not are in F, is the same as the union in this case. I mean, I mean, uh, uh, let, let's take suppose I had this one. Then F plus G is going to be one two one three. It's the set. It's the, it's the difference. It, it, they, these are not elements of the sets. They're 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 elements of the family. They're sets of the family. Yeah. It's uh, in fact. Uh, but it's, I'm glad you asked that because that's that leads to my next definition. So there are other operations on families that we. Um, well, no. I'm, I, 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 I'll get to it in a minute. But uh, but. Um, um, uh, the, these are operations at the top level. Uh, we're taking the union of two families, but we're not taking the union of the elements uh, of the sets in the families. But that's another uh, important operation on families, which we're going to get to in a minute. Uh, before, uh, yeah. Um, so if we intersect um, two sets that both have support for an element, how do we know the intersection has support for the element? It doesn't. If, right? if, we, if we intersect two sets that both have support for an element, yeah. Then what? Um, the intersection does not necessarily have support for the element, so why can we have a node? This is true. It, it, um, yeah, actually, um, uh, if this turns out to be if this turns out to be <coughs> the empty set, then then we actually leave leave V out. Yeah, I I, I should have mentioned that. I, I I really don't come come to this, but af afterwards when I get to to checking whether this node actually appears, I. I, um, it, 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 okay, if, it, it, if I ever try to create a node that looks like V uh, empty uh, alpha, then I just convert that to alpha. Yeah, you, 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 um, so that's right. That my, my, uh, my subroutine create a node uh, throws this case out. Did I answer your question? What? So, 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 it, it, so, although I, this is the recursion that, that that I do afterwards. If this guy turns out to be empty, then that, then we don't put this in this V in the data structure after all, because uh, because of course this whole thing might be uh, might be empty. Um, if um, no, all right, yeah. Now, but let, but. Uh, uh, I, I got to get to the application because these are the amazing things, and I and I'll have to just zoom through these. So, w w one of the um, application um, what one is uh, e uh, exact cover problem. <coughs> so, w w one of the one of the co one of the combinatorial um, applications that uh, for which ZEDs are are are, are great is. Uh, something like this. Suppose I want to. Well, maybe I'll, I'll get it out of my notes here. This is uh, 127. Um, yeah. Um, so, okay. So, for example, suppose we want to cover a chessboard with with uh, 32 dominoes. Um, now, um, and how many ways are there to do this? Well, uh, uh, it turns out there's 13 million um, 
ways to do it, uh, but this is just an example of many other kind of exact covering problems. And um, we can describe that as, as a big matrix of zeros and ones where each row of the matrix is one way to place a domino on the chessboard. So I could put a domino on the first two squares. Or I could put a domino vertically on the first square and the, you know, and then the, the, the square in the next row. This is, this is 64, imagine 64 columns here. And then I have 112 rows for the different places that you can put a domino on a chess, on a chessboard. Um, and what we're trying to do is, is find 32 of these rows, uh, that exactly cover everything. So that if we add up those 32 rows, we get 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. That's an exact cover problem. Now, um, uh, we, we can consider this a family of sets where, where the, the winning sets are the way to choose th the sets of 32 rows that, that uh, solve this problem, or the sets of, sets of domino positions that cover the chessboard. Uh, well, it turns out that the, 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 the ZDD has 2,300 nodes uh, for that problem. Uh, but the, you know there are 112 uh, places to put the, the, the domino, um, uh, it, uh, but but the ZDD has it, and and it, and uh, it's easy once you have a ZDD, it's easy to count uh, the number of solutions. Now uh, here, here's a more interesting, more exotic kind of a covering problem. In this case, I'm covering the chessboard not only with dominoes, but with monominoes or trominoes, okay? So in other words, I, I, I can have, I can have uh, one cell or, uh, like here or three cells. And the uh, trominoes can be either uh, uh, this L shape or, or, or a, a long domino. Um, so um, now, uh, how many ways are there to do this? Okay, nine, two, you know, this is this long big number here, 92, uh, uh, Sex I don't know what it is, and uh, it it takes it, almost no time to figure that out. Uh, uh, you have 468 variables now. There's 468 ways to place one of these uh, ominos uh, somewhere on the chessboard, and, and, and that gives you a um, uh, uh, exact cover problem with 468 rows. Um, and uh, the ZDD turns out to have uh, 512,000 nodes to it. Um, and it doesn't take very long. It's, well, I, the, the calculation here, I said, take 75 megamems. I, I, I measure all the, all the running times in my book by memory accesses, because this is something that stays the same even though computers keep uh, changing according to Moore's law. So 75 million times that I loaded or stored from memory, uh, uh, and, and, and I calculated the number of ways to do this covering. Uh, okay. Now, now that, that so that's one kind of application. One cool application of ZDD. Um, uh, we can go further. In fact, um, yeah. In the seventy-five megamems, are you including the algorithm that you use to compute the ZDD? Uh, th this was. This was. Uh, I. I started with the um, the four hundred and sixty-eight r r rows. Or whatever it was, I started with the uh, with the given zeros and ones, but that's just trivial to to create that. Um, so 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 that's not going to be a million more. So 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 what I what I'm counting is the the it, 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 everything that's involved with uh, with with building the data structure, garbage collection, and and uh, caching and everything that that I'm doing in order to make sure that I that I don't have any repeated nodes. And and uh, by the way, my uh, my program for this is on is on the web. Uh, it's called BDD15. Um, you can get it from my downloadable programs page. Um, <coughs> and and it shows you the way I did the. Uh, 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 it's it, it's instrumented so so that it shows you how I counted these uh, these mems. Okay now. Um, you, while I'm while I'm into dominoes, let, let, let's consider uh, some of the, some of the ways of placing dominoes. Uh, I work out with three colors. You, you can imagine red dominoes, white dominoes, and blue dominoes, and you give yourself a rule that you're not going to allow any two of them to uh, 
to touch. Maybe at the corners, but not. But but you can't have a, a red one, a red that has a whole edge in common with another red one, and so on. Okay. So now here's uh, here's an exercise where, um, uh, and uh, we want to use we want to use ZDDs for this. Um, uh, how many, this is exercise 216, believe it or not. Um, uh, how many ways can I cover a chessboard with red, white, and blue dominoes with no two dominoes of the same color next to each other? And um, the answer, um, let's see, exercise 216, the answer to exercise 216 is, um, oh, well, Let's see, we get it here. Um, oh, oh, let me see, I, I, I got the numbers. Yeah, the number of ways was 13 billion. Um, uh, it, it gives every, every coloring six times because red, white, and blue uh, uh, would occur in different terms. Anyway, there are 13 billion ways to do it. Uh, and the Z and, and the running time was uh, uh, 1.2 gigamems, uh, so 1.2 billion mems. So, so in other words, uh, uh, less than one tenth of the of the number of solutions. You know, for every solution that that occurs, you you, you spent one tenth of a memory access uh, in order to in, in order to determine it and 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 uh, uh, represent it. Now the um, the second part of this exercise says how many, um, sorry, how many of the of the domino co coverings, these, these 13 million domino coverings, how many of them are three colorable? This is a different problem because sometimes uh, there's many there's many ways to take a domino covering and co color it with red, red, white, and blue, um, but other, other ones there's no way whatsoever. So how many of them are are three colorable? Well, it turned out with an, uh, again with ZDDs um, and another 1.3 gigamems, you could you could uh, determine that answer, and the and it was um, uh, let's see what exercise are we talking? So 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 I have this uncoloring function, which is which is easy to do recursively, and the answer is three million and some. Um, so uh, these are problems that I had no idea could, could be uh, by any other method uh, could, could be done anywhere nearly uh, uh, so efficiently, and I've been playing with other kinds of combinatorial algorithms for a long time. Now, <coughs> all right, so that's that's application one. Application two, we're running <laughs> short of time, so I got to uh, uh, dictionaries. Um, there, there, there's lots and lots of great ways to store collections of words. Uh, that that are already well known in computer science, but um, uh, ZDDs can also do some things that these other th these other things don't. So here's an example. Um, suppose I'm doing the five letter words of English. Uh, now I I've got uh, many many examples in, in in my book are based on the set of all five letter words in the English language and it turns out there are exactly 5757 such words uh, according to my my definition I, I I decided in 1995 to define exactly what it means to be a five letter word of English and that was <laughs> that was before I knew the word chads and and, uh, and a few other words that have come up later like um, like <coughs> blogs, but um, um, uh, anyway, these are my words. And uh, so uh, here I do it something like I did with the L's and R's for, uh, for the parentheses. I I, I have uh, uh, 130 elements of my universe: a1 through z1, uh, a2 through z2, and so on, a5 through z5. And the word "funny" would 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 be represented as a set: f1, u2, n3, n4, y5. Okay, so a family of sets, a oh, family containing 57, 57 sets, um, and I and uh, and I'm going to tell you what, in a minute why I write this in the notation with an F and a square, square union sign, 
instead of a, instead of another symbol there. So this is F joined with U2, joined with N3, joined with N4. It's a join operation, joining elements together into a set. Uh, and here's words and so on. And, and, and this whole, this, this whole ZDD for all of the 50, all of the words of, five letter words of English uh, starts out with A1. Uh, and th then comes the, you know, the, the, the things that start with A1. Uh, the next possibility is to check uh, uh, if the second letter is in A, A2. And if so, then the word is ARG, A-R-G-H. Okay, if not, then, then we look for a B2, okay? If, if you don't have an A, then you have to have a B. Or, you know, then you might have a B, and if you have a B, then it could be an A, and it could, you could have, you know, B, A, B, baby, or, or, or I don't know, bat, uh, there must be a word starting with B, A, B, um, uh, and so on. Uh, at the bottom of the tree, it's, it's kind of interesting. Uh, um, you have um, one branch comes from R, E, L, A, and then it can be either relax or relay. Uh, so, so, so um, on the other hand, most other words that end with an X, uh, there's only it has to be an X or, or nothing. So, um, at the bottom of the tree, we have one one uh, Z5 node, one Y5 node, two uh, X5 nodes, three W5 nodes, and so on. But that, but that you can imagine this this big tree containing uh, defining all the 57 all all the five letter words of English. Now. Um, it's similar to a, what we had called a tri memory, um, uh, but that's a tree instead of instead of a dag. Uh, um, uh, the, the tri memory T R I E. Um, uh, uh, but but now if we, if we use the Z D D operations, we can do more things. And let me let me give you a couple of quick um, examples of that. <coughs> um, so. Uh, uh, Question one: All words, all words of the form T blank or uh, or T something U something H. What what are the five letter words that that have this form? What? I I, I can't hear. True. Tough. Tough. Okay, that's a tough question. Okay. Is that it? What? Touch. Touch. Truth. Truth. Touch, truth. Okay, touch and truth. Yeah. Okay. In fact, that's it. Chunk. What? Chunk. T R. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, anyway, this, now, but now, um, what I do is I. Uh, so F is my pattern. If I there's a query that I can make, and so I. So, so I give the pattern P, and P is a family containing one uh, one set, and I call it T1 joined with U3 joined with H5. Um, okay, and then I compute um, uh, 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 an operation on, on, on this ZDD, and it will and it will very quickly give me. Give, give me the answer, now, but let me show you the operations that we that that that, that I'm doing, uh, because this answers the question I promised I would get to, that you asked before. So if I have uh, there's more operations on family. Uh, F square cup of G is the set of is the family of all alpha union beta such that alpha is in F and beta is in G. Uh, there's F, um, and this is called the join. And then there's the meet of two families, uh, and that's a square cap. <coughs> and this is the, the set, the family of all intersections, uh, where we take one element, of, uh, one set from F, and one set from um, uh, from G. All right. So this is what you were asking about before. Uh, and it's different from the union of the two families, it's the join of the two family. Uh, and there's also F um, uh, exclusive or G, which is what you had in mind when you were asking me, asking this question. It's the, it's the uh, family of all symmetric differences the, sa uh, the same way. So this is the delta of, of two families. Uh, 
there's also uh, uh, something that I thought of uh, two or three weeks ago that's, uh, that um, uh, I don't even have time to hardly mention it in my book. I don't, have, I, I don't know what the notation is to use for it anyway, but it's the set of all unions, um, the family of all unions the, that alpha is in F, beta is in G, and alpha is, is disjoint from beta. The set of all disjoint, so I call this the disjoint instead instead of the join, uh, um, and this turns out to be tr to, to be important in a lot of combinatorial applications, and it's even easier to compute than the, than the other one. But the the anyway, these are you, just like we had for the union intersection, and so on. There's a simple recursive definition that, that applies to ZDDs that computes the join of of, of two um, families, the, the the meet of two families, etc. Um, and the disjoint. And sometimes, and, and I believe that for some of the applications that I the, for which I use join, if I I could have just as well used disjoint, I would have run faster. But I haven't had I don't, don't have time to uh, to check this out yet. There's just so many things still waiting to be done. Um, now there's another one, that, the quotient f f over g, um, and um, um, this is the set. This is the family of all sets uh, alpha that. Um, have the property that if if uh, um, alpha union beta is in F and alpha intersect beta is empty. Uh, sorry, this is equals empty here. I'm, excuse me. I, I meant that they're, they're disjoint, not 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 that they intersect. So so the disjoint was that one. But this one says that I I take a disjoint union and this is for all, not just for. for for some, for all beta in G. So, so it says that, for example, if um, um, if uh, well, if, if G has only one, if there's only one beta altogether, then it's just saying uh, 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 look for all words that that include beta. Look look for all elements of, of F that um, um, uh, that if we added beta to it. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Look for all, all alphas so that if we added added beta to them, we, we would get it. So so that, so this is just like um, uh, something like like the one branch. Uh, uh, if 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 G was just a family containing the single element, uh, the the single element V, um, and and uh, there's F mod G, um, which is F minus G. Joined with F over G. Uh, well, I, not time to to dwell on on uh, the meaning of all these things, it, but I but I, I just want to mention the query that we make in order to solve this question. All words uh, uh, tough touch and truth. Here we specify a pattern, uh, and, and this would work for any pattern, of course. Um, and then we compute F divided by the pattern. Um, uh, and then we join that to, to, to the pattern. In this particular case, F divided by P would be uh, uh, the family that contains O2, C4, O2, G4, and R2, T4, because this would make, and then we join that to P and we, and we get uh, touch, tough, and truth. That, that, this is the idea of, of, of taking the quotient of, of something. So, so you know, find all words that 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 um, that contain ev everything in the in, in the denominator. Um, okay. Now, uh, second query: uh, in in what five-letter word? In, in what five-letter words um, can we change a B to an O and still have a, and get another word? Um, now it's a little hard to to do this because B is a constant, and O is a vowel. So, so, so but but there are um, there are uh, a bunch of these, and uh, um, in my in this notation with these operations on families, um, uh, I, I can, for example, say F divided by B one joined with O one 
no, B1 Union O1, um, um, and and then I I join that with B1. This would be a word. Um, uh, in, in other words, I look for all five letter words that have either a B that that have that work with with B1 and O1 both. Um, and one of the answer is um, busts. Okay, busts, ousts. Okay, there's also um, <coughs> basis. Basis goes to oasis. Okay, so then you know, then um, uh, I can do it with, with with other positions. It turns out in the second position there 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 are none. But if I but if I look at um, the third one here and I join that with B3, it turns out there's only one word and it's Bobby. We'll change it to booby, okay, and um, and 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 with and, and in the fourth position, um, uh, there there are there are three answers, and uh, um, I will give you just uh, one of them. Uh, well, no, I'll let you find the others for yourself. But how about herbs? Okay. So, so you get the idea, and and so. Um, <clears throat> So with these operations that we have on families of sets, uh, there's a need for a notation for them. Uh, I, I found no, you know, I find people using these these operations, but I don't have <coughs> anywhere standard notation. So I'm I'm trying to uh, promote the, the notations that I that, that I came up with. It's, that they look fairly good, uh, and I've been working with them for a while. And so I call this family algebra. And so, so we have an algebra. You know, you have Boolean algebra. Well, there's also family algebra. So, so family algebra has operations not only of union intersection, has join, meet, and uh, and there's more. Um, okay, I, um, I uh, what family value? Family value. <laughs> really. Okay, this is great. Now. Um, uh, and the, I, I, I could, I, I don't have time to give you my, my other examples, but, uh, but, but here's like, take this one, F, uh, meet F, uh, minus F. This would be, F meet F is all of the, um, um, uh, it, 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 every, uh, it's a family of all things that, uh, can, that can be rep, uh, all, all fragments of a word, all, all, all partial words that that are the intersection of two of two different words, uh, except uh, take the word with itself. Uh, in other words, it, 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 every word uh, intersected with itself is, is just a five-letter thing. But but if I throw out those, then I'm getting all the subwords that uh, all the intersection of 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 two distinct words. Okay. Like R E L A um, is one of the examples we had before with re relay and relax, with, 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 and, and so on. Um, now, um, all, all intersections of two distinct words. Uh, and well, I have lots and lots of other examples in my book, but I don't have time to, uh, to do it. And, so, and, and some of these calculations, are, I, I, I believe, I can do much faster with ZDDs than with the, with, the, with the ordinary ways of representing dictionaries in the computer. Can you, can you polydromes? What? Palindromes? Palindromes. Put you now on. called palindromes. Palindromes. <laughs> 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 you know this one, right? Um, um, Yeah, but yes, you can. Yeah, you can. You can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can. You can find pa you can find palindromes with uh, with uh, with ZDD and 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 other stuff too. But 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 not not the fast. I mean, there there are faster ways to to, to get to get. You know, not all combinatorial problems go go best with ZDD. Um, uh, so so let's not go overboard. But but uh, uh, so. A lot of times, the more constrained it is, the um, 
uh, the, the more some of these more classical and simpler methods uh, um, and, well, and well-known methods uh, would go. Okay, now uh, where am I here? Though I, I, okay, so I'll never get to. The, um, uh, okay, so well, there's just so many, <laughs> so many things. Let me let me see. So um, since we're yeah. I, I've never run so far over time before, and you guys are very nice to stay this long. But uh, so, so, so let me let me explain to you what I what I would love to to go on in more detail, and then you can download the thing and, and see why I wanted to make a, a a course in it. So, still more operations on families. We have the closure on, on a, uh, and these are things that people who 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 are, you know, there's so many people working with families of sets in different parts of combinatorial. So we talk about the closure, the set of all intersections that you can get, um, uh, yeah, uh, a anything that you can get by any number of intersections, not just two, but three t intersections and things like this. Uh, we, we can ask for the maximal uh, elements of a family, th those that aren't contained in any other, in other set of the family. We can ask for the minimal elements of the family. We, uh, the cross elements, uh, that, that's too hard to explain. The non-subsets, the, the, the elements of F that are not contained in any, in, in any uh, elements of, uh, 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 of G. The, me the members of F that are not contained in any member. The, the, the members of, I, 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 I use this, this arrow here saying, uh, go away from F in the subset category and, and, and go towards G. And, and going away from F uh, uh, for, for supersets is an arrow in this direction. And 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 uh, by the way, there's there's also an arrow going this way, which are the subsets, uh, the ones that that the, the elements of F that are subsets of um, of some element of G. Um, so so they, so you got to have notations for these operations, and all of these operations again have nice recursive definitions on the ZDD structure, and uh, th don't take much time. Um, <coughs> APL keyboard, uh, yeah, this is uh, what what I ha well, I, I I I can use two letters, but yeah, okay, but but in in my um, uh, I I I can't imagine what would have happened if uh, if if this had come along uh, at the time APL was designed. Okay, uh, now, uh, so this gives us graph theory. Um, and hypergraph theory. Uh, so uh, a graph uh, is a family of sets. Each set has, t has two elements in it. Uh, a hypergraph is the same kind of thing. So the independent sets of a graph are the power set not contain it. Okay, this this funny notation. I I use the Weierstrass P for, for for this, but then, but this this is the this is the family of all sets. So so to take the family of all sets, but that that are not contained in any in any element, uh, uh, in any edge of of the of the graph. That's by definition an independent set. And and uh, this has a very simple ZDD. Um, it goes like. One dot 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 two dot 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 three and so on, and and uh, so anyway, we can we can find all independent sets. We can find the maximal independent sets by taking the maximal elements of that guy. We can find all the dominating sets, um, and uh, uh, there's a, it, it's a fairly simple calculation to find the dominating sets of a graph, the minimal dominating sets. And, and uh, so, um, I'll give you the flavor of that. Consider the, uh, the, the chessboard where I have um, uh, queens, and and consider the graph where two cells of the chessboard are adjacent if um, if they're in the same row, or the same column, or same diagonal. So now. Uh, um, the, the famous eight queens problem is to find a, a maximal independent set of, uh, of 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 queens that would be eight queens like this. Um, the um, but there's also uh, 
uh, this is also a maximal independent set. These queens don't attack each other, but if we place any sixth queen here, uh, it would it, uh, it, it would um, it, it would be in line with one of these five. And so this is called a kernel of a graph. Uh, it's a, a maximal independent set, not just an independent set. And and the smallest kernels are 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 important in, in, in many combinatorial problems. So so this is an example of the smallest kernel. Um, then uh, you have clicks here. There's a maximum click. Uh, the, 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 these are both maximal clicks. And this is a maximum click of queens. This one, the, these are dominating sets. Um, a dominating set is uh, is where uh, all everything that that doesn't contain a queen on it um, is attacked by some queen. Um, and and um, uh, this is the only case where you can leave out the entire middle of the board. And, but it's not an independent. Um, it, you know, th these aren't independent, but they dominate the whole board. So, and here's another dominating set. This is this is a, this is a, a problem that uh, not not too well known. Uh, place eleven queens in such a way that. Um, uh, that if you take any one of the eleven, uh, you leave so, so, you, you leave somebody uncovered. Uh, one of the cell, you know, all, all of these cells that don't have a queen in are, are covered here. Um, uh, but if I left out any one of these eleven queens, uh, uh, it wouldn't it wouldn't be dominating the whole board. And you can't do that with twelve, but you can put eleven queens uh, this way. Okay. So anyway, these are these are problems that are v that are very nice to solve with ZDDs, um, and for. Um, all, all graphs and hypergraphs, um, uh, and in, in, in many cases, I, I I think it's better than backtracking, better than the other solutions that I that I used to know. Okay, now, um, so uh, well, I got these graph problems. Uh, then there's there's path problems, uh, and um, uh, so to my to my surprise, uh, uh, I. I I can, take, I can take problems like this that um, uh, say find all the paths from a corner to corner of a of a square that don't intersect themselves that don't intersect themselves. Um, if we do it on a larger grid that is eight by eight, so this would be the number of ways to move a rook uh, from, from upper left corner of a chessboard to the lower right corner. Um, without ever going into the same cell twice, uh, there's 789 billion ways to do it, and the ZDD um, has some 35, 34,000 nodes. Uh, uh, where the uh, uh, this is a ZDZ for the three by three case, um, and uh, so uh, uh, you can solve problems like uh, about paths. Uh, and and here's and, and when I showed this to Randy Bryant, who's the guy who invented BDDs, uh, he said, "Okay, Don, uh, uh, how's this for a problem for you? Uh, suppose suppose I wanted to take a driving tour of the continental United States, visiting all of the state capitals, passing through each state only once. What route should I take to minimize the total distance?" The following diagram shows the shortest distances between neighboring capital cities. So, like between uh, capital of Missouri and capital of Kentucky is 562 miles. Okay. So, so, so you have the data here on this on this graph, and um, you can make a ZDD. Uh, uh, you, you, you're supposed to find a Hamiltonian path of the smallest total length in this in this graph. So, w what happens? Well, it, it, um, it turns out that. Um, there's a ZDD of 7,800 nodes uh, for all the all the paths um, uh, uh, from California to Maine that don't that that, that don't go, go through any state twice, um, and um, and uh, not necessarily Hamiltonian, but uh, but these are simple paths. Just a simple path. It means it doesn't doesn't hit any vertex twice. Uh, and uh, you can also determine how many paths there are of each length from California to Maine, and, and you know there's four paths of length 11, 124 of length 12, and so on. Uh, the longest paths are Hamiltonian, and, and there are two million of them. Now, um, if we're just uh, okay, anyway, um, we, we can solve we, we can solve Randy's problem, and the to the total um, running time in I forget how many megamen uh, it's. 
Uh, let's see. So Maine to any other state, there's 68 million ways to do it. Um, but exercise 230 contains the answer, so I show you the answer. And um, I guess we better wind up here. But but these are the unique minimum and maximum routes um, in his problem, starting from Maine. And they, by, by chance, they both end up in Virginia. If you if, if you if, if you follow them through, uh, the best way is eleven thousand some miles. The, the worst way is eighteen thousand some miles. And um, the amazing thing is that with the ZDD, um, uh, it not, you can not only f easily figure the um, the shortest route and the maximum route, but you can also find the average the cost of the average route which is 14,000 some, and the standard deviation. Uh, okay, so uh, between all these routes. All right, so, um, and um, somewhere in here I, I, I mentioned the running time, which was quite, re which was quite reasonable to, to, uh, to do this. Okay, well, um, there's more. <laughs> Uh, as I, I, I'm trying to find examples of, uh, I, I, I was I was looking at spanning trees of a graph, and and I had I had constructed the, the the BDD for the connected sets of a graph, and that appeared um, that appeared here. I had the in this in this graph I I wanted to say which sets of edges are connected, and this is a Boolean function. That's true if they're connected and, and false if they aren't. Well, then um, I, I wanted the, uh, the, but then I wanted the, being connected means it contains a spanning tree. So then I wanted the, uh, I, I, I wanted to, the, the BDD for all the, um, um, all the spanning trees. Uh, you know, in other words, f of x is, is 1 if and only if x is a spanning tree of this graph. And that's a lot bigger. Um, so, I, so, so I looked for the ZDD for, for the spanning trees. And, um, to my surprise, the ZDD was exactly this, um, and um, so I said, "Well, that's you know, I, I better find another example because." Uh, but but uh, I couldn't. Uh, it turned out that uh, you take any any connected graph and you form the BDD for its connected uh, subset. That's also the ZDD for all the spanning trees, um, and. Um, and 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 I I I, uh, I, I saw Shadi and I maybe, I guess he had to leave now. Uh, he proved the converse uh, and conjectured the converse. That is, if you have any any uh, uh, b graph of a monotone function that's BDD is equal to, to the ZDD of its prime implicants, uh, if and only if the prime implicants are the uh, um, the independent sets of a matroid, which which is uh, anyway. There's there's marvelous. Th Theorems out there just waiting to be discovered. Uh, these, this theorem is about a month old, and um, um, in, in Paris last week, I, I met Jean Vimain, who had been playing around with uh, with ZDDs to represent integers, uh, huge integers, and, and doing operations like multiplying integers represented as ZDDs. <laughs> and uh, um, I, I believe then that there's a, uh, uh, a lot more. Uh, Coming in this world, as as more and more people get to uh, get to understand this uh, marvelous data structure. Okay, excuse me for for for, for going so far over time. I just couldn't help it. Uh, <clears throat> uh.